Requirement number one finished, requirement number three finished. However, the big requirement number two is uh, yet to be done. And we will start with the A part here. Play game. The dealer deals the cards to the player and dealer. And I think I have some, some details here. And the idea is that, well, the dealer takes the top card from the deck, shows it, and gives it to the player. And then he takes the top card from the deck again, shows it, and gives it to himself. And once more, he takes the top card from the deck, shows it, and gives it to the player. And four, the dealer takes the top card from the deck and gives it to himself, but keeps the card hidden. And lastly, the scores of the dealer and player hands are presented. So, quite a... I would not say large, but but uh, it's quite some uh, some actions to to consider here, and we have this uh, this new idea of of uh, cards being shown or hidden as a responsibility. Who should know that if a card is shown or hidden? Um, we have this task of uh, of dealing stuff to uh, to the player and to the dealer. Uh, who should be responsible for that. Um, and we also have the last responsibility of uh, presenting, calculating scores and presenting uh, these uh, hands that have, have been uh, filled with cards. And who should know what, what hands the, the uh, dealer and player actually has. So that's a, uh, yet another responsibility to think about. But I think we should take one step at a time. We will start by doing a sequence diagram. Uh, WebSequenceDiagrams.com open. This will become probably become way too messy to write on the the uh, smart board using my writing skills at least. So I will be using this. It's quite good. Uh, you can do uh, most uh, most things that you would like to do. We can have like alternative flows. Um, you can have um, uh, loops and stuff like that. So it's it's quite nice. There are some features that are only available in premium, but uh, I think you could probably get by. Uh, tool support for C good tool support for sequence diagrams is. It's hard to get by. Often it's quite messy in uh, WYSIWYG editors. Uh, so I actually prefer these where you write some kind of a small syntax and then the, the, the view is generated. But uh, you can probably find some good stuff to do your sequence diagram. So let's get back to the requirement. What is the first thing that actually happens here in this requirement? Well, if we go back, it's actually a signal that the player wants to play the game. And that he wants to start a new game. So, what is this then? Well, it's a system event. And how should we handle system events? We should use the uh, controller pattern. And we have already done this actually. So the responsibility should be inside the controller to handle the event. And our convention is to ask the view if, if the event has happened. So let's just continue that. However, um, as we are using a console for view, we cannot really do it in in this way because then we would would need to kind of like ask the user do you want to quit yes or no do you want to start a new game yes or no do you want to hit yes or no do you want to stand yes or no uh, and that will become a little bit messy so we need to change this uh, a little bit and there are some ways to do it 
usually I create an enumeration inside the view that represent all the types of system events that can happen. And you have kind of like one function that you ask, get the system event, and it returns one value from this enumeration. I think this time I will do it a little bit uh, differently by just asking the view to collect the system events, and then we can have these once to quit, once to start new game functions instead. You can also solve this by adding, do, using a kind of like observer pattern construct. That is, you send some kind of uh, listener into the view, and the view can then uh, call this listener with different functions. And this interface will probably be implemented by the controller. So you have a little bit of different options here, and depending on the actual technology use, you can have uh, you can do it in a little bit different way. Maybe the observer kind of like solution is the most uh, advanced, but it also gives the the probably the easiest way to try to reuse your controllers because you, because you can probably have a graphical user interface to uh, to manage these kinds of uh, events that happens. But basically, what we would like to do is to um, to ask the view after we have. Well, the program calls the controller play game, and then present instruction is, are, is called, and then we uh, ask to uh, the view to collect its events, and then we can. We can ask the uh, view if the user has selected to start a new game. And as we can see, we already have all these classes in place, and well, it's just a matter of the implementation. So let's do it. Did we call it collect? So something like that. Uh, let's just compile. See if we can can uh, do the same thing as we had before. Oops, something is not uh, right. Yeah, I think we forgot to. I think we forgot to. Uh, collect the events. Now we have it. So, uh, of course, I can't do anything but quit. So the next uh, event to handle is then uh,
All right. So uh, maybe we should just add some kind of a small um, debug printout so that we know that everything is working. So. And we got to start new game there. So it seems like we have fixed the first responsibility of handling the system event of uh, starting a new game. So next step. All right, we should take the top card from the deck. We should show it and give it to the player. All right, the first thing is to get the, the top card from the deck. How should we assign this responsibility? Do we have anyone that knows about the deck already? The dealer, exactly. So let's take a look at the dealer. The dealer has the deck. So the gist of it would be to add this deck handling stuff to the dealer. And if we take a look at the requirement once more, this kind of like is repeated four times and the dealer takes something from the deck and gives it to himself or to the player. So maybe this whole start new game scenario, at least these steps, one, two, three, and four should be assigned to the dealer as it is always about taking a card from the deck and doing something with it. So let's just uh, add that responsibility to the dealer for now. Uh, let's call it start game. And we should have a card, card C, um, deck. And I think we already have this. Uh... No, we don't. We have a get random card, but that should not be it. So dealer, start new game, deck, get top card. And yeah, let's freeze there for a moment. So, all right, we can get the top card. Now we should show the card and then we should give it to the player. All right, okay. Uh, Showing the card implies that somewhere a card can be hidden. So we need to know what cards are hidden and what are what cards are not hidden. So where should we put the responsibility of knowing if a card is hidden or not? This is something that is an information requirement. For each and every card we need to know is this card hidden or is it not hidden. Who should know if a card is hidden or not? The card itself. That is probably a good idea because this is some information token that we need to, to, to add to each and every card and as also stated here in the chat, 
inside the card class is the natural place to, to put this. It's a, a, a piece of information, a trait or a state of each and every card, and putting it inside this card class then is probably a good idea. We could have other solutions, of course. We could have an array or something like that in the deck. So you could ask the deck, is this card hidden or, or not? You could, you could use some other kind of wonky situation, but actually it mimics reality quite well. Either the card has the face value up or it has its backside up. So this is definitely something that we should add into the card. We could uh, just do this. Let's get back to our small uh, uh, sequence diagram. We had had one one uh, uh, note here from the from the uh, uh, chat that shouldn't the dealer be in controller? And exactly, we need some, of course, some way for the controller now that has gotten the system event to tell the dealer, well, now you should start a new game. So we need some form of of a way to uh, to do uh, this. We need to do this call, of course, and it's the controller that has kind of like the focus. It knows that, well, we called the the, uh, the user indicated that he wanted to start a new game, and we need to tell this to something in the model so that stuff can happen. So the controller here needs access to the dealer and let's just send it in for now since we already have the uh, the dealer outside in the I don't know why I copy pasted that So something like this is needed, and we need to send the dealer also into the controller so that the controller can work with it. And now we have the dealer that is doing stuff, and it's doing this, and we are back to the card. So we agreed. Add this state to the um, card. So, what should happen if we try to get the color and get the value of a hidden card? So, should we be able to, to call these get color or get value if a card is hidden? No. Why? <laughs> we could just add 
is hidden operation and everyone that needs to 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 kind of like care if a, a, a card is hidden or not could just call this function and and okay the card is hidden so i should not ask for color or value that could be one way to solve things Actually, I, I prefer the, the, the idea that, that uh, color and, and value are not available at all if the card is hidden. Because, well, you will probably forget to, to call this uh, is hidden stuff somewhere if you, if you need to do it a lot of times. So adding a new function to the interface of the card uh, to handle this is uh, probably not a good idea, I think. So, should we throw an exception? Yay! <laughs> we, we could do that. Or we could just uh, accept that, well, maybe it's a special kind of color and value if the card is hidden. So I think in this case, we can, we can just add this. Hidden. Hidden. So if So, if the, the uh, card is hidden and you ask for the color or the value, you just get a hidden value back. I think this is quite good. One drawback is that if you don't take care, you can create a card that has the color hidden and the value hidden also as its actual colors and value. But if you look in a magic box, there are cards that look like this also so but probably you should uh, maybe throw an exception in the constructor here if hidden and hidden are sent in but we will leave that for now uh, all right let's get back to our sequence diagram so we have this we are in the dealer. Uh, and it will call model deck m deck get top card. That was it, wasn't it? And it should show the card. Card C show. Get top card and we get a card and then we show it. Dealer, show, next step in the requirement is to show it, that is done, and then we should give it to the player. All right. So the dealer needs to give cards to some kind of player, and the player needs to remember the cards that it has gotten so that we can calculate the scores of the player and the dealer hands 
respectively. And finally, in step five, we should, should also display these hands. So, how should we solve this responsibility? Who should take care of the player's hand? The player. I could agree with that. Because we have our domain model, we clearly have a concept player. So adding a, the, this conceptual class also in the design is probably a good idea. We already have the dealer. And we can see here that, well, the player plays against the dealer or vice versa. And, uh, well, adding this to, to the design is, is uh, mimicking the domain model uh, quite clearly. So let's uh, do that. Let's call it deal card, maybe. So we give it to the player. And this operation, sequence of stuff, is kind of like repeated four times. So, but this time, the dealer gives the card to itself. And Once more to the player, and finally, we remove the last show card there. So, this is what we are to implement. Then, the first four steps is uh, are done. So, code. And in the implementation, we have the problem that we don't have a player. So we need to create that one first. Uh, the idea of having two player classes is actually that uh, in, in the model, we have a player concept, the player class to, to manage the player's uh, cards and stuff like that. It's in the domain model. We have a player also in the controller because that represents the actor player that plays the game. So this one is for the rules of the game, the, the player inside the model. And the uh, player in the controller is for uh, representing the actor player. So, player is created, uh, should we have this deal card, or what did we name it? something like that. Uh, next step is to how does the dealer know about the player? We need a player object here to be able to give the card to the player. Well, we could create a player object here. Would that be a good idea? No, it would probably be not be because we will have hit 
or something like that here also and stand and well we, it needs to be the same object so we could add it as a member I'm not really uh, comfortable with that either because well the dealer kind of like does not contain a player uh, it, it plays again get against and uses a player so uh, as stated in the, in the chat here just send it in as an argument So then we need to send it in as an argument and we probably need to have it as an argument here also. A little bit messy but let's go for this for now. And we can also maybe if we look a little bit ahead we can we can see that well we need to to, uh, to 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 know the hand of the dealer and the player and give this in some form to the uh, view so that the view later can display the the hands uh, of the dealer and the player. So we need we need the player in the uh, controller anyway. This adds a dependency exactly. So, uh, and this means also that we need to, to create this player when we start the game. Along there, and we also need to supply the player there, of course. Now let's do it like this. The player will be named player P and the controller player will be named C for controller. All right. So stuff is uh, is uh, at least compiling. Uh, we still have some uh, uh, stuff to do here. We need now to uh, well, basically do the same thing again, but this time the card should not be dealt to the dealer, but to the uh, to the player, but to the dealer itself, and we don't need this one. That and we also should kind of like add the hand of the the uh, dealer should also be available. Uh, doot doot doot. So, all right, uh, I think you can see that this kind of like code inside the start game very, very much mimics uh, what we have here. It's almost exactly the same. So this is basically what the sequence diagram is. It's step by step goes through the, the code and the calls of the code. Uh, it's always a matter of detail. How detailed do you want to be? Uh, my rule of thumb is, well, I, I add calls that 
are calls to classes that I implement myself. So stuff that is actually inside our project, well, that is added to the sequence diagram. So I do not add uh, add in the linked list class call here, for example. So that is where I draw my line. I don't go further into basic libraries and stuff like this. And basically this is done. The next step is to calculate the scores and to uh, show the hands of the dealer and player. So we need some kind of access to the hands uh, and well, the responsibility of displaying the hands and the scores should be in the view. So basically we are back inside the controller and the controller needs to tell the view something and it needs to uh, tell the view the score uh, and the uh, hand. So present something like this maybe. So, we need to send something uh, also here. Uh, so, we need to ask the uh, the dealer. And we need to, uh, so we can kind of like do it like this. Hand uh, equals get hand. So something like this. So. The uh, controller asks the dealer to get access to the hand and it gives this then to the view to present. A view. Present dealer hand. So we need to have this operation. But what should we return? Hmm? We have some options. We could of course just just write well Something like that would work perfectly fine. Uh, what what would be bad about this solution? You, you we can like break encapsulation, and we also give the user of the uh, the dealer class the opportunity to do a lot of strange stuff with the hand. And this, this makes it hard to, to know what actually to do if you are to use the dealer class. So if you have something like this, and we have this start game class operation, and I am the implementer of the controller, and I'm supposed to implement this uh, requirement of starting a new game, should I get the, the hand of the dealer and start adding cards to it manually or should I call the start game operation and that will do it. So I don't really know what to do. 
And there are several ways to do the same thing. And that is probably not a good idea. So, fortunately, we, we could just think about it. What is it actually that we want to do with the hand? Well, we want to go through it and we want to display it in this case. So, we don't want to be able to add stuff to the hand or remove stuff from the hand. We just want to iterate it. And fortunately, we have this uh, available in the collection classes of Java. And if you don't have that, you need to kind of like construct this yourself. Because showing kind of like the internals of a class to the outside world, is it's not a good idea. It kind of like breaks one of the fundamentally good stuffs about object orientation, and that is encapsulation. And the other uh, thing that it's, is destroyed is abstraction. Because you would like to work with the on a more abstract level when, when dealing with the dealer, like starting games and dealing, uh, getting the hand and stuff like that, not get the hand and do detailed operations on that hand. That is something that we use the information expert pattern to let the dealer itself have that responsibility. And we should not allow anyone else to mistakenly or not, uh, add that uh, responsibility themselves. So iterator card here is uh, the best choice. And also this is needed inside the player class, of course. And as, as always with tools, you need to kind of like work with them and they are not always perfect uh, UML, but uh, it can be close enough for most parts. Um, so I, I think the, the main idea is to, to uh, use the sequence diagrams as a tool to, to kind of like um, understand the, what you actually need to do in your uh, requirement and, and map this to the uh, design and to the classes. Uh, as I said some lectures ago, I personally don't do sequence diagrams first, and maybe this kind of like also showed during this lecture that, I, oh, I coded a little bit, and then I, oh, I need to go back to the sequence diagrams and add a little bit, and sometimes I did the opposite. I did the sequence diagram first, and then did code. Um, so uh, the exact order is not written in stone, and we have actually not done a, a class diagram yet. So the exact order of implementation, design, and, and testing a little bit is somewhat floating. Of course, depending on your project and stuff like that. In, in, in this case, we don't have that many classes yet, so it can, can kind of like be in, in the head of us as we do this in, a, in a, something that is more complicated and larger, well, then maybe we need to have the class diagram uh, up when we do this sequence diagram also. And uh, maybe if we are a, a lot of developers, we need to kind of like at least coordinate our efforts for the day and maybe take a look at the design at our stand-up meeting or, or what we do to start off the day and divide work and, and discuss how certain aspects are going to, to look in the design and then go off, implement, uh, maybe get together again to redesign or solve other problems and implement some more, test some more. So the exact order of, order of things is not written in stone. <clears throat> 